Okay, so I'm currently camped out at a rest stop in northern Montana, just about an hour and a half to two hours south of the Canadian border, which is where we're going to be heading to today. We're finally crossing over into Canada from Montana. And if you couldn't tell from the start of this video, I have a drone now. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie, this thing might be the most fun I've ever had in a long time, flying something around. I used to get all those, I used to get helicopters when I was a kid for Christmas, like those little RC helicopters, but this thing is next level. You can do so much with it, and it's so fast. But I'm excited to see all of the different cool kind of shots I can get. I can do like these tracking features and, and all this kind of stuff. But for now, I'll take you guys up there, and this is the rest stop that we're staying at right now. So it's just kind of out here in Montana. A couple trucks over there, some other things, but really in the middle of nowhere with not that much around. So just sitting here having some fun with the drone, messing around with it, testing out some of the new features like the tracking, and then, uh, whoa, we're gonna get out of here. Come here, little guy. Beautiful. This thing is crazy cool. I cannot wait to use this up in Canada and Alaska. I've only had it for just about a day. I bought it on Facebook Marketplace up in Great Falls, and I'm already having a blast with it. And it's actually super simple to use. I don't think it was gonna be as easy as it was to fly, but once you get it off the ground, it's very intuitive, and the tracking feature is kind of what I'm most excited about, so I can get some cool shots of the van driving down the road and a bunch of other cool stuff that I'm excited to try out with this thing. But that will have to be when I'm in some sort of location that's a bit cooler than just being at a uh, rest stop in Montana. It also came with this cool little carrying case, which it's gonna be really nice for keeping everything together and not breaking it. Also, if you couldn't tell, um, which you probably couldn't because there's a sink full of dishes, I did deep clean the van last night, but I didn't realize after I got to my spot when I was cleaning it out that I didn't have any dish soap, so I wasn't able to do my dishes. But we're heading up north and I'm gonna pick up some uh, dish detergent and we're gonna do it up there. I also have a package that I need to pick up about an hour north of here because I got it shipped to a UPS, UPS access point which I think is in a car auto body shop or something like that. I'm not really too sure. I haven't used a UPS access point before, which is essentially like general delivery. Basically, you can get it delivered to their business. They'll hold it until you can pick it up. That's where we're heading first, and then we're gonna finish up a few things that I have to get done, then we're heading over to Canada. So the town that I stayed in last night of Great Falls, Montana, I just stayed in a uh, little truck stop just outside of town, right next to the airport. I was doing some research on the area, and I found out that Great Falls and this topic is actually up for debate, but at least at one time it held the Guinness World Record for the smallest river in the world. And when I was looking it up, it got me questioning what is the definition of a river? Like, does it need to be a certain size? Does it need to be a certain volume of water? Does it need to be this? Does it need to be that? And there's kind of really no true answer. It's just, it has to be going from one body of water to another larger body of water. So technically this little man-made canal from a freshwater spring into the river, counted, but apparently there are rivers all over the world that fit that same criteria, but they don't count for some reason. So they don't hold the world record anymore um, because Guinness actually took it out because I guess it's too hard to really judge which one's the shortest. But I just thought that was an interesting fact, so I thought I'd share. I definitely am excited to drive over to Canada, but I'm a little nervous. I've never driven across any kind of borders with the van. So I'm interested to see what it's gonna be like, but I don't think that I can record it once I get there. But after I get through, I'll tell you guys all about it. So I think this should be it, but I don't know. This is where my GPS has taken me, where my package should be. But it looks like it's just an empty lot, so I'm gonna look it up and see where it actually is. Okay, I did some digging. It is across the street, so it says the UPS access point is here, but the uh, access point is actually in this CarQuest auto parts, so you can get out, run over there, go pick it up. Hopefully they have it. I always run into issues when I go to pick up packages, so hopefully there are none now. I decided to just drive over there. How's it going? I'm just picking up a package from UPS. Ryan. Package acquired. So it's not anything big, it's just something I needed. 
shipped to me from back home, but I'm glad it was actually here. So it's nice that it actually worked for once. So now that we got that, I'm gonna drive over to the uh, local grocery store in the area and just finish up cleaning the van and make sure that I don't have any prohibited foods left. I've used most of the food that I had in the van. I used all of the produce. I used most of the meat. I think I have one loaf of that tube meat left. But other than that, I don't think I should have much in terms of food that is prohibited to bring into Canada, but I just don't want to do, I just want to do one final check, make sure I'm good to go because the likelihood that my entire vehicle is going to be searched, I think is pretty high since it's a van. In order to make that process go as smoothly as possible, I'm just going to pull in here and do one final check to make sure I'm good to go. All right. I guess I know I can't bring any fruits or vegetables, produce, so these salsas have to go. I think this meat has to go and then I think I can bring butter and all of my condiments which is pretty much all that I have left oh, also that has to go other than that I think everything else should be good in this fridge and then in the pantry I think everything in here is also good but I guess we'll find out once we get there so I think we're good to go I got all my important documents in here like my passport anything else I would need I'm gonna go ahead and throw that away and then we're heading north all right, we should be good to go. Don't know why I'm so nervous, but I am. So we've got about a uh, 30 minute drive until we get there and I know that I cannot record once I get up to the border. So I will check in with you guys on the other side. now in Canada, looks just like America. But they just asked me a few questions. It wasn't really anything serious, just kind of, what are my plans? Where am I going? What am I doing? Did I bring anything illegal or anything like that? So very smooth border crossing, didn't get sent to secondary inspection, but now we are on our way up to Calgary is our first stop in Canada. Where I think I'm gonna be trying to stealth camp tonight, but we got about three hours and 15 minutes till we get there. We have completed our USA, well, at least our lower eight, for, lower 48 portion of our road trip. Very excited. It's gonna be really cool to go uh, check out all the cool spots in Canada and then finally make my way up to Alaska after I think it's been six or seven months. And the only real difference in driving here is that it is in kilometers per hour and not miles per hour, but my gauge also has kilometers per hour under it, so not a big deal. Also, I'm kind of used to it since I did drive around in Iceland, which is also kilometers per hour. Welcome to Alberta. Canada. Woo! So I think our first stop in Canada before we head up to Calgary this afternoon is going to be this rest area because apparently they have a potable water fill up station. So I'm going to fill my water tanks because I think they're running on E. And this seems like the easiest place on the way there. So I figured I'd stop by. I think it's over here. This makes the most sense. I don't know. It doesn't say potable. I don't know though, it doesn't really say potable on the uh, spigot there. Whatever, online it says it is, so I'm just gonna go ahead and fill up. Looks good. And it's honestly probably time I get a new one of these filters, so I think if I see one in a store, I'm gonna grab one. I've had this one for kind of a while. There we go. She's filling up. I will say though, it's not the uh, fastest flow right here. You guys probably can't see it on camera, but this might take a few minutes. All right, I think she's pretty much had her fill. It's nice we were able to fill up right when we got in here. So that's one less thing I have to worry about, at least for a couple days. Oh, I didn't even turn it off. All right, righty tighty, lefty loosey, you gotta remember that. Get a little bit wet. So I think after tonight, the plan is kind of go to Banff, check out some of the national parks in the area. And then after that, just kind of uh, just kind of keep on keeping on towards Alaska. We're in the final leg of the journey, and I honestly cannot wait to get there. Let's hit the road.
All right, so we're a bit deeper into Canada now, kind of in northwestern Calgary, and I don't know if you guys can tell, but it was an absolute bug massacre on the way here. Pretty much 100% flat farmlands until we got to the city here, and there was a ton of bugs and also a singular suicidal bird that was sitting on the shoulder of the road and decided to fly right in front of the van right when it drove past. And, um, and I don't think he made it. Kind of worried to see if he is stuck in the grill or not, but we're about a mile away from where we're gonna be camping tonight and it's actually at one of my favorite US campsites and that is Walmart. So I figured since we don't have any more groceries because we used it all and then threw away what we couldn't use or what we thought we couldn't use because honestly I could have brought it all, they didn't even check the van. I gotta go to the grocery store anyways, so I might as well hit up Walmart and it's getting kinda late, it's already seven o'clock. Camp there, cook some dinner and then tomorrow we'll get into more adventure -y Canada stuff. And also, I don't know what happened. I ran out of uh, windshield wiper fluid on the way here, even though I just replaced it like four days ago. I guess I've been using it a lot, wiping off bugs from driving through Montana and then up to here. But yeah, this is it. Good old fashioned Walmart Supercenter for our first night in Canada. I guess I'll just kind of take one of these spots over here in the back, call this home for the night. Also, it looks like my uh, desk chair went a bit rogue on my way up here. Slid all the way out, that's never happened before. Usually it stays nice and tucked in its little house in there. But, now I gotta figure out what I'm making for dinner. So I sat back here, watched a few videos on my uh, phone, trying to figure out what I'm in the mood for, and then a video about chicken wings popped up, so I think tonight I am gonna make some hot honey chicken wings because I do have some leftover hot honey from that pizza recipe I made a couple months ago. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's go to Walmart, get what we need. Oh, no. All right, so I was just walking the uh, cart back to the van and I'm not gonna show you it, but I noticed when I was walking over here that there's a little bird wing hanging down from there. And if I go a little lower, you see his whole body. I don't know how he got stuck in there. I guess maybe he went right through that little slot and just got stuck down there. That stinks for that guy. I guess I'll figure out what to do with him tomorrow. Not gonna deal with that now though, before I go to eat. So I just ended up getting the uh, chicken wings, some pickles because I crave pickles sometimes, oil, and then dish soap so that I can do my dishes so that I can cook tonight. Well, that's pretty much it. I think I have all the rest of the ingredients in the van because it's mostly just seasoning and sauces. And I think before I start cooking, I'm actually gonna move to one of these spots in the back over here under the light. Just get more out of the way. This is kind of a small parking lot. So I ended up just taking the van, moving it over here more into the back. So we're farther away, more out of the way. And I think this right here is gonna be our campsite for the night. Should be nice and quiet, even though that road over there is pretty close. It's decently far away and my bed is on the other side, so it shouldn't be too bad. Before I can start cooking anything, I gotta get at least some of these dishes cleaned up so that I have room, so that I have some dishes to cook with. It's nice, because one of these small bottles fits in there perfectly. So I'll check back in with you guys when the dishes are clean. There we go. Dishes are mostly done. Didn't do all of them, because I don't feel like it. And the ones that are left in there are super dirty and they would've taken forever, and I'm starving, so I don't feel like cleaning them. And now, we can get to cooking. And I always get comments from people telling me to clean my stove. So last night I did. Mirror finish on that bad boy, just in time for me to mess it up again. For these wings, I'm gonna grab myself some gloves, a bowl, or in this case a pot. Then we're gonna take these bad boys and coat them up. Guess I should've put these gloves on after I did that. Garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, salt, a little bit of cornstarch, and some avocado oil. We'll mix all that together. There we go, beautiful. And then we can get our big boy pan out, get some avocado oil in there, and let that get nice and hot. All right, I think the oil's hot enough. Go ahead and throw these guys in there. So I think we're on a slight incline here on this parking spot. All the oil's going to one side. Make sure you get all of them nice and coated. And then while those little chicken wings are cooking up, I'm going to get started on the sauce. For that, we're using good old fashioned Korean barbecue sauce hot honey, and some butter. Nice and washed out. And honestly, ideally to this uh, to this sauce mixture back here, I would be adding fresh garlic, but I don't have any. 
So we're going to be using the powdered stuff. And then to this back pan, I'm going to add some of that Korean barbecue sauce and some hot honey, and we're going to let that cook down until it thickens up a little bit. And honestly, it's getting pretty hot in here, so I think I'm going to open this door up a little bit. Get some fresh air in. Ooh, that feels good. And these wings are looking so good. I feel like I haven't had wings in forever. I'm so excited to eat these. All right, I think these wings are just about done. Looking delectable. Throw it into the sauce over here that I've had thickening up. Get them nice and coated. And we're eating. These look so good. Let's top these with some sesame seeds. Finishing touch. Chef's kiss. Now those right there. Or some wings. Also, I know I uh, mentioned that I had got my new drone in this video, but there's really no opportunity to use it today, so I'll just have to use that in the next video. Also, another thing about driving north is that the further that I get, the longer that the sun's gonna stay out. So it is currently almost 8.45 and still this light out. We've probably got another hour and a half of sun left, and we're still in southern Canada. All right, let's give these a little taste test. That is actually really good. Definitely a little bit sweeter than I anticipated, but I do wish they had a little bit more kick. Maybe some sriracha or gochujang would have done the trick. But with that being said, I am very happy with the way they came out. And I will say it definitely feels good to finally be in Canada after so long of having to put off this road trip to be making some positive headway. If anyone's got any spots or recommendations for places as a camp, things I should see, or uh, someone I should try to meet up with, Leave a comment below. I'll be driving up from here to Edmonton and then pretty much the only route that you can take from there up to Canada. So let me know, leave a comment below. And I, we're gonna finish these wings. Alrighty. Dinner was delicious. I'll take those bones and I'll throw them away later. But bonus is now I have some lunch for tomorrow. But to kind of uh, give you guys the full perspective on this, uh, this road trip, from here, and I'm already four hours into Canada. The drive up to Fairbanks is almost as long, if not longer, depending on how many detours I take, as it would take to drive from the East Coast to the West Coast of the United States. So it's a very, very long drive. It's a very, very remote drive. Once I get past Edmonton and up into Whitehorse and then over into the Yukon, there's really not gonna be much that's up there. Currently on this map, we are right here, just outside of Calgary. Tomorrow, we're gonna head into Banff, Maybe try to find a camping spot somewhere up here in the mountains. And then we're gonna come back down and take this road up to Edmonton or maybe over to this one. It doesn't really, I don't really know yet. We're gonna kind of drive up all these roads. You can see all the campsites that are listed. I'm, I'm gonna try not to stay at too many paid campsites. I really don't plan on staying at any, but I mean, there might be times where I need to. And then from there up to Dawson Creek. And then if you flip over a couple more pages, Dawson Creek is where the Alaskan Highway starts. And I'm pretty much gonna be following the Alaskan Highway all the way up. It goes quite a while doo -doo 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 -doo. up to Fairbanks, Alaska. So that is my route. That is where I'm going to be going. If anybody has any amazing campsites or places that they've stayed before or things that I should see along that route, please leave a comment below. I don't really have a plan yet. I don't know where I'm going to go, what I'm going to see what I'm even going to be able to see with a two-wheel drive vehicle. So either way, it's going to be quite an adventure. I can't venture too far off the highways because one, snow melt, it's going to be muddy. Don't want to get stuck in the middle of nowhere. And two, the vehicle just doesn't have that high of a clearance. So uh, I am kind of limited in the things that I can do and go see, which kind of sucks, but we're still going to make the most of it. So if you have any recommendations in Canada or Alaska, let me know. But it is already 9 p.m. So I think I'm going to clean all of this kitchen mess up and then go to bed so as always i appreciate you guys watching if you haven't already think about clicking that subscribe button it really does help out the channel and i will catch you guys next time